Hello everyone and welcome back guys to season 3 of our F1 2020 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we're here back kicking off the new season. I was really, really looking forward to getting back into it today. So make sure obviously if you are new, you get yourself subscribed, leave a like on the video as well. Obviously if you do go on to enjoy. But yeah, season 3 then of our career mode. We're repping the number 1 on the car. It is absolutely something you love to see here. On F1 2020. We have got a bit of a redesign on the car as well heading into this season. Unfortunately, the race weekend thing is all in the way. Uh, but we've gone for a bit more of a sort of standard orange, white and black paint scheme for the car for the new year. In terms of upgrades though, you can see having a look at the performance graph. No major changes coming off the back of season two. We are just all conquering in every single department, excluding obviously reliability at the moment. No real big surprises, I don't think, looking up and down the order, except for the fact Alpha Tauri have a better aero system than Red Bull, so clearly whoever's doing theirs needs to take Adrian Newby's job at the moment. But yeah, really, really looking forward to getting to the new season. We have actually got 3,750 R&D points as well uh, that we're going to spend on a couple of upgrades here before we jump into it. We're going to go with the ultimate fuel efficiency upgrade for 1,850 and then we are also going to go with the... What other upgrade can we actually go with on the car? We can get one more aero upgrade as well. Uh, we're going to get the additional Cascade winglets upgrade on the aero side of things as well. So everything costing a lot of money at this late stage of the game. We've only got three, uh, seven, eight, ten more upgrades, performance impacting upgrades to go on the car before it is maxed out. So that probably is one of the games over the course of this season. But the big one is obviously try and go back to back here on F1 2020. We're very much expecting now our new teammate George Russell to probably be our biggest rival in the early races of the year. But yeah, we're after just a dominant display over the course of the season. Try and fully show that we're not just a one sort of a one trick pony or one year wonder in Formula 1. We are here for the long term. I'm ready then. Hopefully you guys are as well. Let's dive in then here for round one of the season from the Australian Grand Prix. So then back at Albert Park it feels good to be racing around this circuit once again here. The car yeah from this point of view is looking like basically we've gone for a Mercedes style ripoff ready for 2022. We might have to go for a bit of a repaint on that because I do like having a bit of orange on the you know sort of visible as well here but yeah hopefully this first weekend of the season we can just get to grips with the car as always it you get a few performance upgrades everything like that heading into the australian grand prix i'm just intrigued to know just how much quicker this car is than last year's one because i mean again we've probably made some big big well i know for a fact we've made some big big performance improvements over the course of a year but just how much time can it find us Here we go then, ready to go out for our qualifying simulation run. Our qualifying time last year was a 1 minute 20.5. Now already, the aim that it wants us to beat is a 1.18.6. So if we can beat that, then we've found 2 seconds since last year's Australian Grand Prix. But sometimes the qualifying times can be a bit optimistic. But at the moment though, car's feeling quite good. I'm just trying to work out just how much downforce we need to run on it. It's Carlos Sainz in the way a, a fair bit, I'll be honest, as we reach the end of Sector 2. Thank you very much, buddy. Finally getting out of the way. I'm sure people are going to definitely spot this thing behind them in their mirrors at the moment. But anyway, yeah, coming out towards the back straightaway. Coming down in through the final couple of corners then. We are definitely going to be up on that predicted time. Not by too much in the end, but still, it's going to be a 118.5, which is ridiculously quick. I'm more than happy to admit, at least for me anyway, on F1 2020. Is a 17 going to be possible in qualifying, however? Let's find out. Heading out into Q2 then, what a car we have got underneath of us. George Russell in Q1, a 117.4. That's right, this thing is straight into the 117s. We set a 117.9 in Q1 after making a couple of mistakes on our lap. This thing is just insane 
how quick it is around this Albert Park circuit. You know, this place is really, really satisfying uh, when you get it hooked up anyway. We're going to go out in Q2 on a set of the mediums to see if we can... Well, we should be able to get through to Q3 fairly comfortably, irrespective. I mean, we could... As long as we don't do that, uh, we could probably make it through to Q3 on three wheels. In all honesty, that's just how quick this thing is at the moment. But, yeah, a little bit loose and lively through the first few corners. There, I didn't actually see what time George Russell did as we were trying to save the back end. But, yeah, really, the early races this season, I think we're in for a bit of a treat. In through the final couple of corners to finish off our Q2 run. It's been, yeah, a bit loose and lively for the most part, but it still should be a fairly respectable time. No, it's not. It's a 19-1. That's nowhere near where we needed to be. We'll have to go out on a set of softs. In towards the final few corners then of our second run. Track seems to be a little bit slower actually than it was in Q1. But we're still going to be about eight tenths up at the end of the session there. That actually puts us Raikkonen at 117 0. I think I'm going to see that lap. So we are technically, yeah, pole position. I'd like to believe that Raikkonen's lap is by no way clean. But... That's good enough for us at the moment. Yeah, so having a look at that, I don't believe Raikkonen is one and a half seconds quicker than everyone else in Sector 2, in all honesty. Nice to see that glitch still exists, though, F1 2020. So, when Q2 is all done and dusted, then, Raikkonen is fastest. We've actually got to finish 1-2 there. As you can see, Bottas now sneaking down into the 17s. Charles Leclerc up in P3 ahead of both of us. Hamilton there, Verstappen, Albon getting through into Q3, Danny Kvyat as well uh, for Alpha Tauri. So Red Bull and Alpha Tauri seem to have got over some of the issues that we saw from them that plagued them throughout Season 2. But yeah, both Renaults, both Mercs, both Ferraris, both of us, and two Red Bull themed cars into Q3. Let's see now if we can try and get a sort of mid to high 17 hooked up. Here we go then, heading out for our first run in Q3 then. I think we're, yeah, like I said, going to be in for sort of a mid to high 17. One lap runs. I think George Russell has just got the edge over us at the moment. But if we can keep it nice and tidy, keep it clean, keep it hooked up, we should be in for at least sort of joining him on the front row start. Remember, we've only ever had 1-1-2 one, one, as a team so far, which has been quite funny considering the amount of pole positions we got at the end of last year. Taking a, a bit of curb through there but obviously this season we want to try and you know absolutely dominate if possible you know we want to be getting pole positions left right and center just trying to break a few of Mercedes records if we can as well there Danny could be at current pace benchmark on a 189 we should be able to go a lot lot quicker than that as we head out onto the back straightaway don't know what times George is doing he's actually just the car just in front of us as don't really want to be using sick through there if we can avoid it not getting the best run through the fast chicane there. But anyway, down into Sector 3. Just got to try and keep it nice and tidy. One of the Mercedes Bottas there in 18-2. Through in towards the penultimate corner. Just try and keep it nice and calm on the brakes. Locking up ever so slightly. Hamilton goes even quicker at 18-0. What's George going to be able to do? George Russell a 17-6. What are we going to be able to do to combat that? An 18-0. So Hamilton splits us at the moment, but there's definitely a lot more time to be had. Here we go then, ready for our final run in Q3. We need to try and find, well, about a tenth if we want to be quicker than Lewis Hamilton, but, you know, we'd like to be a bit closer to George Russell, if possible here. One more shot then to enjoy Albert Park in a ridiculously quick Formula 1 car here. Down in towards turn 1. Really just open up the corner as best as we can there. We're pretty much even with our previous lap down at the 100 meter board in towards turn three. Ooh, a little bit of a lock up that time round. Doesn't allow us to get the best run through the corner. Keep it nice and tidy through the next couple though. We'll be able to find a little bit of time from that after we had a bit of a mistake on our first lap there break just after the 100 board. Chuck it in there, hope the back end grips up and you can get the car rotated through 100% bravery and commitment through there break just after the 100 down into here. Just running towards those curbs but not quite getting the wheel spin over them here. We're about three tenths up at the moment. We need to concentrate through here. Taking a bit of curb on the exit but we get a nice clean tidy run out in towards the final sector of the lap. Let's just try and keep it nice and hooked up and tidy. Don't get any wheel spin. Don't break traction anywhere. A little bit loose in through the third last corner. 
Try and get it slowed down on the apex through the penultimate. And then roll on the power through the final corner. A bit of understeer as we wash up towards the start finish line. But it is a good lap here. It's going to be a 117.4. <laughs> there definitely wasn't much left on the table there. Third? Second. That's, that's fine. George, I'm guessing, went quicker. A little bit gutted, but I felt like Paul was on the cards. And with qualifying complete, let's review our top three today. Russell, Mr. Monaco and Lewis Hamilton. Goodbye for now then, but we're really just getting started. Make sure to join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. So there we are then, the end of qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix. And it is George Russell on pole position, the team's second ever front row locking. And our second front row locker in a row then, obviously finishing off season two. And starting season three in the same position there. We've got a sixth, tenth margin over Lewis Hamilton in P3 there. Didn't quite break into the 17s right when it mattered. Albon looking very, very quick in the Red Bull, though. Up in fourth, able to split the Mercedes there as Bottas down in fifth. Charles Leclerc in sixth on his return to Ferrari. Able to edge out his new teammate, Max Verstappen, by two tenths of a second there. But Ocon, I spoke about him in the pre-season video yesterday, how quick he looked at the end of last season. Having a pretty good job done there up in 7th, Kvyat in ninth, and Raikkonen down in 10th place there, so very, very interesting after qualifying, might not be able to make the one-stop work like we have done in the past here, but I'm sure safety cars might play a big role this weekend as well, let's dive in then here for the Australian Grand Prix. It's finally time once again to begin what promises to be another thrilling season of Formula One action. Pre-season time, subject of so much discussion in recent weeks, mean nothing now, as the cars line up to battle it out for points once again. So let's get this season underway. Welcome to the Australian Grand Prix. We go racing today then in the state of Victoria, where the drivers have 16 corners and 3.3 miles to navigate at an average lap speed of around 120 miles an hour. The close proximity of the barriers makes accidents inevitable, and recent history shows us that a safety car is not at all out of the question. A new season then, a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. George Russell will begin today's event from pole position and Mr. Monaco completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Albon, Valtteri Bottas and Leclerc, Ocon, Verstappen, Kvyat and Kimi Raikkonen, Norris, Stroll, Pierre Gasly and Ricardo, Sainz, Perez, Jordan King and Nobuharu Matsushita. Magnussen, Giovinazzi, De Vries, and Nicholas Latifi. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. So here we are then, on the grid, ready for the Australian Grand Prix. Round one of the new season. And if qualifying's anything to go by, we should be pretty happy. Heading here to Albert Park. Really, really looking forward to the opening race of the year. Fuel efficiency has always been quite good in the car in recent seasons, so I'm not going to put any spare fuel in. However, I am going to go and try a one-stop, uh, sorry, a two-stop strategy here for the opening round of the season. I don't really feel confident uh, that the hard compound tyres are going to be the way to go this weekend. They just never really quite felt very good in free practice. So we're going to try the two-stop, the softs, medium softs, over the course of today's race. And fingers crossed, it all works out well for us. But... Can we retain our championship after last year? Eight pole positions in a row for the team. Can we make it ace or eight race victories as well? Only time will tell. Here we are then, Albert Park, the opening round of season three. The five lights are coming on now then, and it's five red lights. So lights out, and away we go. Not responding as well to the lights as our teammate George Russell there, as it looks like Hamilton is going to be able to get a big, big run around the outside. It was one of the Renaults. Almost going into the back of us there. Esteban Ocon, I noticed, went for a big, big send up the inside through the first couple of corners there. But Hamilton does hold on to P2. As look already at George Russell, three seconds up the road already. He's decided he's just checking out of this Grand Prix before it's even began here. 
but not the ideal start that we needed to this race. Everyone behind us trying to make up places off the start, and it really hasn't helped out myself off there. I was quite surprised, normally, honestly, that Hamilton was able to hold on to it in the end. I thought he was going right round after he accidentally went into the back and trying to avoid the Renault car that was going for the almighty send. Obviously, turn one of our park, not the easiest place uh, to go for overtakes. Normally, you try and make the moves up into turn three there, but it seems like Alex Albon, who started on the second row, has dropped back off the start, as that was a little bit of a poor line through the fast chicane there. Bottas up a spot, Ocon as well up the order as well off the getaway. So yeah, a little bit of chopping and changing around us, but George Russell has had the perfect start to this race. He's got a four second lead over ourselves, a three second lead over Lewis Hamilton by the end of lap one. But yeah, we just need to try and settle down into a good rhythm and see if we can get back past the Mercedes nice and quickly here. A 25-1 opener is pretty close, I think, to last season's fastest lap, if I'm not mistaken. It really does go show just a monster of a car that we have got underneath us here. But hopefully, yeah, we can just try and stick with Hamilton for the opening couple of laps, work out where he's strong, where he isn't, and just get into a rhythm with this new car and race trim. At the end of the second lap here, we're almost a second off that, and pretty much at the same pace as Hamilton, it appears, at the moment. But we are struggling a bit, I think, with the dirty air, just trying to get the car working in the window that we wanted to. This was always George Russell's strength at the end of last year. Just how quick he was in the first stint of a Grand Prix. He got rather unlucky on quite a few occasions. Obviously, Abu Dhabi won a brilliant example of that. Obviously, if you remember that from the end of last season, where he led, he basically dominated the entire race until we had a late safety car, and then we had to get round him on a much fresher, quicker set of the soft compound of tyres here. But yeah, we're just trying to stick with Hamilton in at the early stages. It normally, yeah, takes us sort of four or five laps to get into it. The AI very, very quick of a race start. So happy, to be honest, that we still seem to be able to match the pace of the Mercedes around us. Going on to lap six, though, I really just feel at the moment like we're actually struggling a bit with getting the front end in towards the corners. It just doesn't seem to be going quite where I want it to. We're going to try and up the front downforce just a little bit when we come in for our first pit stop here, because as you can see, we're just not really able to challenge Hamilton in the way I would have wanted to in the opening laps of the Grand Prix. He has come out of the blocks rather quickly. You know, he wants to win that world title number eight. And after we stopped him last year, you know, he's he's got a lot to prove here in 2022. But yeah, the gap's just hovering just under the two second mark at the moment for the most part. George is just pulling away a few tenths lap after lap over the pair of us as well. So it's looking good for him. But already, there we go, yellow flags. Don't say... Three years running, Hamilton is going to be out of the Australian Grand Prix. What is wrong with Mercedes' reliability around here? Safety cars out as well. That's rather useful for us. But heartbreak for Lewis Hamilton. Three years running, he is out of the Australian Grand Prix. We're going to have to pit onto the mediums now and pray that most of the cars behind us follow us into the pits as well. But that has gifted us P2 once again in this race. There we go, end of lap 7. George has dived into the pits as well. Hopefully we don't lose out too much behind our teammates. we got a lot of wheel spin through the final corner. We're going to have to attack into the pit lane. Make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidily though. Nonetheless, you can see... Why have Mercedes... Uh, has Bottas just been screwed? Have Mercedes accidentally serviced a car that wasn't there? I have got no idea. But the team just about prepared for us. As we head down the pit lane, 3.9 seconds stop. But luckily, because of Bottas, we've come out still in P3 of the Grand Prix. Gasly now leads the way as Russell is on a set of the hard compound tyres looking to go to the end of this race. Nick De Vries up into fifth place as well for Haas. I'm sure they are loving that down at the American-based squad. But yeah, back out then in P3 of this race. So basically, obviously, where we were before the safety car came out. But now Gasly... Leads the way at the Australian Grand Prix. Getting ready to go green then here once again for the Australian Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly ready to head the field here. We need to get past Russell before he can get past the Frenchman on the restart to make our two-stop strategy work here. But getting ready then to go green out of the final corner. A little bit of a wobble as we try to put the immense power down from the Renault power unit. And look at the run we've got. On our teammate George Russell as we head down into towards turn one. A big, big lockup from our teammate. We get up and under him. And now up into effectively the net lead 
all but this Australian Grand Prix there. That was a critical move that we needed to make for our race strategy here. Obviously, we need to be in some clear air ahead of our teammate here. So now George Russell feeling the pressure from the cars behind. He dominated the opening quarter of this race, but still a very, very long way to go here from Albert Park. We're only a third of the way in as we take a bit too much grass through Sector 2 there. And Gasly, look at that. He's already just trying to run, obviously, on his older rubber here. Up to temperature, everything like that. Able to get it working a whole lot quicker than ourselves. And yeah, it's always been something I've struggled with on F1 2020 so far. It's just having the confidence on colder rubber here. But yeah, perfect little getaway for Pierre Gasly. A pretty decent getaway for ourselves as well. But we just need to try and get closer to the Alpha Tauri. On to lap 11. Now really starting to get these tyres working once again as we would expect them to be in this racing seat. Just how much later we're able to get onto the brakes than the Alpha Tauri just in front of us. Can we now get the run as we head down the back straightaway here? We might be able to get a good run and get the DRS on him off the exit of the fast chicane. 160 miles an hour through there that time round. Obviously we don't have the DRS just yet, but Gasly is feeling the pressure just in front of us in that Alpha Tauri. Obviously, we've got a very, very quick car on to lap 12. Though now we have, obviously, of course, got the DRS on the Alpha Tauri. We need to get a good run through the first couple of corners, and that's exactly what we've done. No DRS has been enabled just yet, but we're going to have to go full send up the inside. No. Yeah, Gasly just late enough on the brakes to defend from that one. Not what we need at the moment, because as you can see, George Russell... Still just filling up our mirrors here. We need to try and get round the Alpha Tauri before he pits, if possible. I mean, he surely is going to be pitting very, very soon in this Grand Prix. But already, you can see the gap we're creating to the cars behind us here. Ocon and Albon currently now into net third and fourth of the race on the same strategy as our teammate George Russell here. This time round, are we able to get close enough? No, we are certainly not on the Alpha Tauri. Takes much curve through both the entrance and the exit of the chicane as we dead. Now we've got the DRS. Now, surely, we should be able to make the move work around the outside of Pierre Gasly here. He's going to keep the nose there. We're going to give him the squeeze over the inside curb, and we get the move done right around the outside as we head now down in through Sector 3 there. So we are now finally up into the lead of this Australian Grand Prix here. Obviously, we haven't won this race in the past. We've never had the car capable of winning this race in the past as well there. But Gasly is going to want to stay out for another lap, which hopefully helps us out, gives us a bit of breathing room over our teammate George Russell here. But probably going to aim to pit sort of lap 20, lap 21, and then go to the end on the set of the soft compounded tyres here. Obviously, we should be quicker than our teammate anyway. Equal machinery on a softer compound. But so far, George has been on another level this weekend. There we go. It looks like our teammate George Russell has been able to pull off the same move as we were able to. No. George still sat behind the Alpha Tauri as we head in through Sector 3 there. So they really cost each other a lot of time. Has he now finally got the move hooked up on him? No. Gasly still trying to hang on in there. Now he's pit though. So George is going to be back up into P2 of the race. But he's got Ocon now all over the back of him as well here as we head through Turn 1 and Turn 2. That's worked out well for us. But we need to keep our head down and pound out some good qualifying style laps here before we move on to a set of these softs to the end of the race because there is still a lot of work that needs to be done here. Obviously, the safety car bunched up the field a fair bit, but it still has a lot of potential, obviously, in a, such an OP car over one lap pace. There's a lot of potential still. Us on newer softs at the end should be able to tear around guys on older hards. On to lap 17 at the moment. We are just pushing like crazy every single lap. It really does feel like now that you've basically got to push this car lap after lap. Otherwise, it just won't quite respond in the way you want it. So, it, yeah, rather a car that likes to be attacked, it feels like, at the moment. But the gap to George behind us is basically staying even. We are opening up a nice, healthy gap over the rest of the field. But, yeah, I think we've created a bit of a monster in George Russell, if the Australian Grand Prix is anything to go by. He looks absolutely rapid, like he did when he finally got to the grips with the car in the latter stages of Season 2. But, obviously, at the moment, we're not quite, I think, a Hamilton-Rosberg sort of level of rivalry. But, maybe, that might be the storyline throughout the entirety of Season 3. Just a few more laps, though, before we dive into the pits. New fastest lap of the Grand Prix. As we head on to lap 20, we might be able to have a look towards the 119s 
when we get back on the softs. But we're starting to pull away a bit more now from George Russell, as you'd probably expect, just by a few tenths a lap, but really just sort of swaying out, trying to get this car into a rhythm. It does feel like it just drives completely on the knife edge at the moment, but sometimes that's satisfying when you get it hooked up, a bit scary, if obviously you don't quite have the confidence, however. But yeah, at the moment, that's not what we needed. Just exploring the grass around Albert Park. But yeah, Ocon now 10 seconds back from us. I don't know roughly where we'll rejoin in this Grand Prix, but hopefully it'll be sort of P6, P7. And hopefully, obviously, I mean, we should be a lot quicker than the cars behind us anyway. So we should still be in at least a battle for the podium at the very least. But will we be able to take the time out of Ocon before the end? We're going to pick the end of next lap. Oh, we've got more yellow flags out. I think that's Raikkonen going slowly in the mid-pack there. If we get another safety car, that could really help us out in this Grand Prix. Yeah, Raikkonen out of this Australian Grand Prix. I don't think we're going to get it, though, unfortunately. It looks like the FIA believe that Raikkonen's car is far enough off the circuit that we don't need to worry, which, yeah, could have really, really carried us in this race. That's not been a good line in towards the pit entry. Come on, Matt. Just get your head back in. Focus on what we're actually meant to be doing here. Make sure it's stopped just about getting it stopped in time. But yeah, there goes George Russell off into the sunset. I, yeah, I'll be honest. I don't think we're really going to stand much chance of trying to get back to our teammate in this Grand Prix. But a fresh set of softs against some very worn hards for everyone else. 2.2 second stop as well. We are going to come out in P7, I think, of this Grand Prix. If we actually remember to get rid of the pit lane speed limiter, no, it's going to be ninth by the looks of it. Just behind Ricardo and Carlos Sainz as well so not ideal but let's just get our head down and try to enjoy the last few laps of this race jordan king up in 10th place could we finally see a return of jordan king into the points i think he scored what two points finishes might have only been one points finish way way back in season one when he drove for us but could he now be making a return to the points here reichland's car has been disposed of so, it's clean racing, hopefully, between now and the chequered flag here. First up, then, of course, the Australian of Daniel Ricciardo. Home race, not quite been the day you would have wanted so far, but Red Bull's pace seems to be a lot better than this time last year at the moment as we try to make big, big gains on the Red Bull. Ooh, just so much grip now on the fresh rubber. Try and use all of the Kirby on the exit. We should have the run, despite Ricciardo also having the DRS. Much, much later on the brakes in towards the final sector. We get right around the outside of him and now back up into P8 of the Grand Prix. So that's one car done. Let's see if we can get past Sainz as well rather quickly in this race. Like I said, we've just got such a quick car anyway. And obviously with the fresher, grippier tyres, not going to be much Sainz can do. We're going to try and get a run around the outside in towards turn one. We just about keep it inside track limits so we make the move work. Up into seventh once again. Leclerc, four seconds up the road. There we go, new fast lap of the Grand Prix, despite being an incredibly sloppy lap. Another 21-2. Bearing in mind, obviously, we made an overtake on that lap, and the gap to Leclerc is basically halved in that space of time as well. It's more a case of trying to get around all these cars than actually closing up to them, though. Obviously, as everyone, I'm sure, is already well aware from Formula 1. Getting close is one thing, getting round is another and then even then getting close can sometimes be difficult because nice dirty air. End of lap 24, six laps to go then here from Albert Park. We are all over the back now of Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris. Can we try and get a run maybe on the Ferrari down in towards turn 1? A 120.2. That is tremendously quick, quicker than our qualifying time from last year here, if I'm not mistaken. But Charles Leclerc's got a good run on Lando Norris. They're going to go side by side down in towards turn three. We just need to be able to capitalise on this. Leclerc, though, I think might be able to make the move work. They're just both sat in the way. No, he can't. Lando fights back. We're going to be able to get up the inside. We completely pit manoeuvre Lando Norris. That was not my intentions, but he sat on the apex through the corner. And we've got a virtual safety car out of that, I think. That was, I'm more than happy to admit, completely my fault. We've picked up the front wing damage as well. There's a bit of justice from it, but not what we wanted there. But both of them just sat in the way and no idea why Lando broke. The SC is coming to an end then. There we go. It is green flag racing once again here from Albert Park. And yeah, like I said, massive apologies 
to Lando Norris there, but we've now got a lot of front wing damage, which is really going to cost us in the last few laps of this Grand Prix. Hopefully, the fresh tyres can sort of even it out as much as possible, but Kvyat, 2.2 up the road. We might be able to get him, but whether we're going to be able to get much more out of this race now, who knows? Four more laps to go then from Albert Park. The two-stop strategy really hasn't worked out too well for us in the end. My own aggression has really cost both myself and fellow Brit Lando Norris a good result here with the hopes of a McLaren resurgence. We've got another car going slowly, though. Who's that towards the rear of the field? I just spotted out my, on the corner of the screen. It's Lando Norris out of the Grand Prix. So gutting then for Lando that they've had to pull the car over after that mistake. Well, I say it wasn't really a mistake. He just seemed to have to break through there, which I'm not too sure why. It's been easy flat all weekend. We've got a safety car out of nowhere here. So this is all kicking off in the last few laps of this Australian Grand Prix. It's going to completely bunch up the field once again. We can't really afford to make a pit stop, though, with three laps to go here because we just lose out too many positions. I would love to just get a new front wing but it's just not going to be possible. So it is just a one-lap safety car then before George Russell is going to lead the way for the final two laps of this Grand Prix. Can we try and get around any more cars here after we've been gifted a bunch up field once again through the final corner? George Russell is going to make it green flag racing once again here. We've got a brilliant run on the Alpha Tower. We just, only just, don't accidentally jump him. But forward is green flag racing there. An aggressive move through the first corner. But we have to make those moves work on the restart here. Straight back up into P4 of this race. Is a podium still possible this weekend? A big, big lockup down in towards turn two here. But we need to try and stick close to Alvin. He gets a big wobble. We get a big wobble. Everyone's struggling with the grip in the final couple of laps of this Grand Prix. I mean, it'll be a gifted podium if we can claim it. I'm sure Alex Alvin... Once his first, obviously, Formula 1 podium as well. Esteban Ocon's been on the podium a few times, even has a Grand Prix victory under his belt. The same can be said for, of course, our teammate George Russell, who spent a big, big chunk of the second half of last season scoring podiums. Pretty much week in, week out here, but just over a lap to go then of this Australian Grand Prix. We're really, really struggling through there, obviously. We're going to have no DRS assistance between now and the check and flag either here, but Albon... Just creating a bit of a safe margin at the moment as we're locking up brakes, making mistakes here, there, and everywhere as we head through this penultimate lap. Can we just sit close to the tie driver? Can he make a mistake? Can all those hard tyres really start to go off here? I don't think it's looking likely as we head out now onto the final lap of the Grand Prix. Might be under more pressure from Charles Leclerc behind than we're able to apply to the cars in front. We've just got nothing with the front tyres here, obviously, with the front wing damage. We struggled so much with them in the first stint as well, but a messy mistake, like I've said, it was my fault. As really, really cost us being able to get a bit more in this Grand Prix here. Still struggling through the car park section there. Look how slow we're having to go through now. Karma for moaning about Lando Norris, just how slow he was through there earlier on in this race. And Charles Leclerc really, really applying the pressure on his debut return to a Ferrari here. But look at that. Ocon and Albon streaking away into the distance. Obviously, the same can be said for our teammate George Russell as well. He's never particularly had much luck around at this Melbourne street circuit. But season three, F1 2022 looks so far to be George Russell's year if this first weekend is anything to go by. In towards the final sector, he's dominated most of the race here. He really hasn't put a foot wrong all weekend despite two safety cars and a virtual safety car George Russell looks set to take home the first win of the new season here Esteban Ocon we spoke about how quick he was in the second half of last season how Renault finally felt they were a threat at the front he's going to come through for P2 Albon gets his first ever podium in P3 but it's P4 in the end for us I'm not too happy with that I'll be honest a day of mixed fortunes up and down the field, we bring today's race to a close. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? 
It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy as they make their way up to the podium. A much-deserved victory and a brilliant performance from them all. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. George Russell takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship. Now, let's discuss, Ant, who would you say is a contender for Driver of the Day? Carlos Sainz would be my first choice for this race. He had excellent race stamina, giving him the opportunity to charge through the ranks. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. The owner Drivers' team moved to the top of the table. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. So a really, really scrappy season opener, I'll be honest. But we learned a lot about ourselves and the car as well as the team this weekend. So, you know, we, we can't be too disappointed as well. There, Our teammate George Russell, pole position and the race victory. We got fastest lap as well. So, yeah, the car looking comfortable in the opening race of the new year there. And Ocon, like I said, he was such a threat in the second half of last season. Seems to have carried on with that momentum in to season three. There, another podium for Renault. Is this finally the year they can fight at the front there? Albon as well. Red Bull finally seemed to have made a big, big turnaround after all that bad luck last season. And Albon finally getting his first podium as well in Formula One there. Myself in fourth. Fastest lap bonus point. Helps us out a little bit, but it's a bit of a consolation prize I'll be honest as well there. I'm really, really scrappy race from myself. I'll have to come back a lot better next time out in Bahrain there. Charles Leclerc ahead of Danny Kvyat there with Carlos Sainz from 15th on the grid up to 7th. Ricardo from 14th making it a double Red Bull point score as well. There with Jordan King, two points on the board. Who would have predicted that heading into this weekend there? And finishing ahead of Verstappen in that Grand Prix for Ferrari there. But neither Mercedes car... Getting into the points there as Lance Stroll just missed out. Bottas all the way down in 15th. One of the only other men on the two-stop, actually. By the looks of it, both Williams... Uh, yeah, both Williams and the Haas of Magnussen opted for that two-stop as well there. But three DNFs. Loris, Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton all not making it to the checkered flag there. It certainly was an up-and-down race to kick off the new season. But obviously, championship-wise, the same as the race order. Constructors, though... We are currently top with twice the points of Red Bull, who are back up into P2 there. Renault in third, Ferrari, Alfa Tauri, McLaren and Alfa Romeo there. So seven teams, seven teams with points on the board. Neither Racing Point or Mercedes, so I'm sure we will be expecting to score quite consistently there. Able to get either car into the top ten. But Williams ahead of Haas after the opening race of the year. Probably won't, you know, be that clean to cut, but it's going to be intriguing to see. How those two backmarker teams fare as well. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do make sure you get yourself subscribed. And yeah, we will probably be back tomorrow ready for round two of the season where we head to Bahrain. You guys do not want to miss it. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.